Hey y'all, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about oyster mushrooms today, uh, specifically the species Pleuratus ostriatus. These are really beautiful specimens of it. It's a uh, nice cool weather, so they've get, gotten pretty large and they're bug free. So uh, I wanna talk to you about how to identify oyster mushrooms, where to find them, what their uh, lifestyle and habitats are, and a couple of notes also on how to enjoy and eat them. So oyster mushrooms are delightful insofar as they uh, are really a rambunctious species. You can find them almost any time of year. They grow on wood, so they are a decomposer, but they can also be parasitic. So you will see them on damaged trees. You will see them emerging from almost everything. Like sometimes you'll see them sprouting out of people's decks, out of uh, you know lumber. They're a really, really uh, voracious uh, species of mushroom. It also makes them a very, very good candidate for uh, home cultivation projects. If you're interested in growing mushrooms at home and you're like me, and so a lot of sterile culture and, and uh, you know, uh, finicky and fiddly processes are kind of challenging, oyster mushrooms are a good candidate because you can just sort of like throw their mycelium around and all of a sudden your house is covered in oyster mushrooms. That is an exaggeration, but not by much. Uh, but, you know, even if you are not interested in cultivation, you can enjoy oyster mushrooms. Uh, you know, you can find them in the store quite readily. I do love the wild ones because uh, they get very large and they can be uh, nice and, and meaty in the stem or if they have much of a stem. So anyway, let's talk about identification. So you have a mushroom that uh, has gills. However, those gills are what's called decurrent. So they start to run down the stem. In the case of oyster mushrooms, they're like deep blade-like gills. They're uh, pretty resistant and resilient. So you can, you know, uh, you can play washboard on them and they won't fall apart. And then you can see streaks uh, of those gills sort of descending down the stem. You also get a mushroom that oftentimes has sort of a, uh, you know, oystery shell look. Uh, so it's nice and smooth. You often have a deep depression in the middle. Another thing that this specimen has is really nice is that it's got a uh, sort of a um, off-center uh, location of where where the stem is. I'll find another one that's a little bit more distinctive, uh, you know, but basically, yeah, here, let's let's just grab a huge handful, see what we have. Okay, so these are really stemmy oyster mushrooms, actually. You know, oftentimes if you find the little ones... Here's a couple. Nope, they all they all have pretty robust stems. But uh, at any rate, you know, uh, oyster mushrooms oftentimes will have a much more rudimentary stem, and it is often sort of off center. But you will see, you know, in this case, they have these really nice little curly tops and uh, depressions, and then you know you get your your stem underneath, and then you throw them everywhere because you're very excited about them. Uh, as far as the flesh is concerned, it is. Um, oftentimes this sort of pale uh, color. Sometimes it's pure white or very, very light in color, especially if you find them and they're all dried out and it's been sunny. But typically this is a lighter colored uh, Pleuratus ostriatus. They tend to go uh, to a really dark gray, especially when it's very, very cold. Um, Flesh-wise, they're nice and uh, you know thick and meaty on the inside. The one thing that can be a little bit of trouble about preparing them is you have so much gill material you have to just basically figure out how you want to handle mushroom gills. That's kind of an emotional decision. I personally oftentimes will take mushrooms and remove gills or, uh, you know, in the case of these, the gills are so robust, I'll probably do something with them. But if I have to make a decision between like there are these, these crusty or, uh, you know, easily uh, disintegrated gills and a nice meaty stem and cap, what am I going to do to make sure that they, um, you know, uh, cook in a way that, that actually works? Uh, aroma wise, you often have a sort of a slightly, uh, you know, faint Swedish, uh, sweet aroma, very slightly. Um, there's a little bit of seafoodiness. That is also something to be mindful of is uh, a lot of the bacteria that go after mushrooms start to smell like fish. So I'm not going to say this smells like a fish. It doesn't. It has basically... Uh, a little sweet, a little mushroomy, mushroomy with a little under undertone of fish. Um, as far as preparation is concerned, 
These mushrooms you can treat kind of like you would treat a white button mushroom. You just want to cook them thoroughly. I uh, really like to make tapenades out of them and jerky out of them. That's what I'm going to do with this collection uh, because, you know, you can um, marinate them in all kinds of lovely things. I'm going to go for something a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy. So I think I'm probably going to go with um, maybe a, a little bit of sesame oil and uh, teriyaki and probably just take a handful of red pepper peppery stuff and throw it at it and see where we go. Uh, but anyway, you know, you can use oyster mushrooms in pretty much any dish that call for mushrooms. And they really do have a nice flavor. They're not like super uh, powerful in flavor. Uh, again, they can kind of be used interchangeably with uh, the white button mushroom or agaricus bisporus, which is, you know, white button mushrooms, portobellas, portobellinis, uh, you know, basically any of those button shaped mushrooms that you find in the store that that's Agaricus bisporus. So anyway, um, you know, similarly, they're, they have flavor, they're mushroomy, but they're not like overwhelming. Pleuratus ostriatus, another nice thing about them is that even though they are voracious and they will kind of take up residence on any kind of wood and will really just destroy it, they do come back year after year. So this is a stump that I've been using for three years now. It's fairly advanced in its decomposition. Uh, but I usually get one or two fruitings out of it um, on a yearly basis. So you can come back and you can see them again. Uh, additionally, as far again as a, uh, like cultivation, you can always try to harvest stem butts or, uh, you know, try to uh, propagate things in your own yard on um, basically, you know, woody material. But I am not a cultivation expert. Uh, suffice it to say, because I am not a cultivation expert, I can say that uh, Pleuratus ostriatus is a good choice because I have successfully grown them. Uh, however, as somebody who kind of favors wild mushroom hunting, I prefer to see them in situ in their own habitat. Anyway, uh, final remarks. Uh, they do drop a lot of spore deposit. These, um, oh, here's, no, that's not spore. Uh, these haven't actually started to sporulate very much, but your spore deposit is going to be very, very, uh, like thick and, uh, whitish, sometimes slightly, uh, you know, with a very, very slight lavender tinge to it. Uh, but you know, there are other mushrooms that look similar to Pleuratus ostriatus. And, um, let me talk about those really quick. So you have a couple of other mushrooms that grow on wood that you want to be very mindful of. Now, um, you know, growing on wood, gilled mushrooms in general as a, like, absolute baseline can be a dangerous place to go uh, because we have little brown mushrooms called Gallerina autumnalis and Gallerina marginata, deadly Gallerina mushrooms that are these little itty bitty brown mushrooms that uh, if you eat them, they can kill you. And they grow on wood and they have gills. And so a lot of very, very like early phase mushroom hunting, the recommendation is just like, don't uh, grab things that, uh, you know, basically could be, you know, could lead to that mistake. In the case of Pleuratus ostriatus and a lot of mushrooms that grow on wood, that's obviously not a concern. There's no way that you could, uh, you know, misidentify this as a deadly gallerina. But you do have a couple of lookalikes. So you have Lentinellus mushrooms. They tend to um, grow similarly on wood. They have this shelving behavior as well. Uh, they have a similar shaped cap. But what you have instead of a stem and even, you know, even an oyster mushroom that doesn't have much of a stem, you still have some sort of lumpy, bumpy rudiment of something. Even if you have to like pop it out, it'll sometimes be like right below the surface of the wood. In the case of Lentinellus, it's just this little flat little dude and there is no stem. It's just sort of a little spot that you can pop it right off. Uh, and then they're also a little bit like weirdly furry on the top and they're very, very thin by way of comparison with an oyster mushroom. And finally, their gills is not this pale color. You know, uh, the, given that the spores of oyster mushrooms are white and they start out this sort of, um, again, pale color color, they will never look the same as a Lentinellus, which is a yellowy brown underneath. Uh, I don't know if Lentinellus is toxic. I would certainly never want to eat them. They're really like have this just very unpleasant well, I mean, I haven't eaten them, but at the same time, the furriness on top of them makes me feel like they would taste like little baby socks or something, and so I'm not into it. So Lentinellus is something to be mindful of. We also have um, Angel Wings, which is a very uh, delicate and uh, white 
uh, mushroom. I can't remember the Latin name off of the top of my head, but there are some reports of, uh, you know, deadly poisonings with people, uh, especially in Japan, I believe, uh, and older populations in particular and people with, uh, you know, compromises. But generally speaking, I don't eat angel wings because there is that documented concern. However, oyster mushrooms tend to be much larger. Angel wings are really, really delicate and they are just snowy, snowy white. Uh, whereas oyster mushrooms, when they are white in color, it's usually because they are bleached on the top and the gills remain this kind of like pale color, even if they're dropping all their white spores. So um, that's really all I have to say, uh, at least today about oyster mushrooms. I am looking forward to spending some time this afternoon marinating and uh, dehydrating them and then chowing down on them. But uh, I hope you find plenty of them yourself and find them to be as delightful as I do.